Okay, here we go. Hey, thank thank you very much, uh, FX Street, for having us on again. Uh, hey, it's, it's good to see everybody in the room. Uh, my name is Jay Norris, and uh, we're, we're going to go over our live market exercise today and, and ideally show you some things that, that you can use to improve on your analysis, improve on your trading. So hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Uh, as always, uh, before we get started, we definitely need to remind everybody that uh, there is a disclaimer involved. Hey, Boyke, good to see you, buddy. Hey, John, trying guy, trying trader. Thank you, sir. Uh, as always, trading futures and forex is a risky endeavor and not suitable for all investors, all individuals. We say it all the time before we start a class. If you have bad habits in life, uh, you know what? They're, they tend to be magnified in a trading account. Uh, some of the best uh, self-therapy you could ever go through is trading, right? And I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, know what I'm know what I'm referring to there. Uh, you know, you definitely have to know thyself in trading. That's for sure. Okay, my name is Jay Norris, and I've spent 20 years working on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade, and I've written a couple of books on trading, which were published by McGraw Hill and serve as a textbook for our courses at Ivy University. The tactic we're going to show you today is highlighted in the book on the right, Mastering Trade Selection and Management. I'm also a professor at ivyuniversity.com where I spend a considerable amount of time teaching and demonstrating the art of discretionary trading in live markets. The methods we teach include both mechanical and behavioral aspects of trading I think it's important that uh, that you know how to combine the two, uh, being both mechanical and behavioral. Hi, Yun. Hi, good to see you, sir. Or ma'am, excuse me. Great to see you. Great to see everybody. Before I cover how we can help you with your own trade selection, uh, show you the tactics that we use in our live market exercises, a few words on methodology. The first thing you will need if you expect to learn to trade successfully is going to be have a robust trading method which works in all environments. It took me over four years to put together a trading course that teaches an objective empirical method that you can use in all trading environments, meaning in up markets, down markets, sideways markets, regardless of the shifting fundamental conditions. If you're going to be a trader, you definitely need to have a method for all seasons. Um, oh, I see Boki has a question. Good question. Thank you, Boki. He says, what's the difference between my two books? Well, I would say Mastering the Currency Market um, would be uh, uh, more uh, of a, uh, I don't want to say advanced uh, book, but more not necessarily for your beginner, but uh, definitely it starts out, everything we do starts out for the beginner. So I would say uh, the first book, Mastering the Currency Market, would be for, uh, uh, I guess, uh, compare them to if it was a, college course that would be like the textbook for for freshmen and sophomores and then the mastering the current mastering trade selection management the second book where we introduce um, how to measure direction on any time frame in any market that would be more a textbook for uh, uh, more advanced for your juniors seniors yeah absolutely uh, try and trader go in there and read it and give it a preview on Amazon no problem um, so Back on point, there's no doubt about it. You have to have a trading method, that, and it's going to work in all environments because you guys know it too. Um, whatever the calendar throws at us, uh, we have to be uh, prepared for that. Uh, and the reason I mentioned what we do teach is what we teach is both mechanical and behavioral in, in uh, nature and that you have to have a mechanical framework to be able to gauge uh, price pattern and direction in any market at any time frame. And then you, you're going to have to develop those behavioral skills uh, essentially uh, learn a little bit about correlations, uh, a little bit about market timing. Uh, so bottom line, you have to have a method that you can count on. Uh, one thing I, I definitely would say about the method then, it needs to be simple. Not necessarily easy, but it needs to be simple for you. Whatever method you're using or whomever is teaching you the method needs to be able to explain what studies the market is based on and why the market works. And they need to be able to do that in as few sentences as possible. Uh, a longtime client of mine, he told me, he said, boy, 
he said he likes you know what we do he likes working with us and he said there was nothing worse than um when he would he would go to a a webinar or a live seminar and he would uh, and it would be the first 10 minutes and he'd ask a question and the instructor couldn't you know answer a basic question about what the method was based on he said oh that used to disappoint him um so here here's a, a way to get around that if you're considering a course again the, the individual teaching it, uh, or even better yourself, you need to be easily explain what the method is based on. I didn't say easy. I said it's got to be simple. You got to be able to simple uh, explain it in simple terms. It may take a little bit to learn it, but uh, at least you have that. So, uh, you know, people ask me, um, how would I summarize what we do in three points uh, as crystal clear as I can make it? I say number one, we use pattern recognition to identify a market's growth pattern. Uh, that's essential. Um, when I say growth pattern, I mean, is the market growing or contracting? Any market out there, uh, it's either growing or contracting. Uh, well, granted, they, they go sideways sometimes, but even that's essentially contraction too. So it, it only, only one or two ways market can do go, right? Go up or go down. It's growing or it's not. Uh, so that's a very, that's a very important, uh, first step, first point. Second point, this is uh, this is extremely important too. Use the scales of those growth patterns on the lower time frame charts to identify buy and sell zones in line with both the higher time frame patterns and the day-to-day -day news flow. That sounds like a mouthful. It's a lot easier. Uh, it, it's it is more actually more simple than uh, than you might think. Use the scales of the growth patterns on the lower time frame charts to identify buy and sell. Uh, zones in line with those higher time frame patterns and the day-to-day -day news flows. When we say that, that, when we use the term scale, we're referring to scalability and pattern. A scaled pattern is one where the sum of the parts equals the whole. In fact, the parts themselves are scaled replications, rep, excuse me, scaled repetitions of the whole. We use these scales or retracements to give us buy and sell zones. Now, what's going to help you at this point is also understanding that different time frames are essentially different dimensions in time. And in learning to trade, you have to be able to see the different dimensions simultaneously, which is something we spend a considerable amount of time uh, teaching. Okay, a couple questions here. At some point, to share them. You teach them how to... oh, that is a mouth. That James, that is a mouthful. Can we use this? Uh, can we use these on the live markets now? Uh, yeah, Al, we'll get to that momentarily. Um, okay, I think we covered that. You can teach her how to. Would you be willing to? Well, you 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 have to, uh, guys. You can definitely go to the website and and, uh, and you've got we've got some courses there to get you started. But um, yeah, let me just keep moving. So those are two points. The third point uh, would be, and what we're going to show you today, provide a fact-based trigger to enter and exit trades, and show you how to use news and momentum to filter your trade selection. It, again, it's a lot, of, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, when I say use news to filter our trade selection, yeah, very simply, if you're a day trader, don't trade ahead of news, right? Uh, also, there's no doubt about it, news creates momentum too. So uh, we teach our students how to, uh, how to work with that too. And basically the third point, a fact-based trigger to enter and exit trades to show you how to use news momentum. That's what we're going to, uh, we're going to show you today. But now, now keep in mind before you know before we jump ahead to live charts. Uh, and by the way, this is something I do quite a bit. Uh, you know, you can afterwards we'll give you the website. You can sign up and you can see our, our live market exercise. You can see archives of them. Uh, one thing though, I want you to understand here is um, I'm here to teach you how to analyze markets. I I'm in preparation to trade markets live. Um, I always get a big kick out of one. Uh, when I ask a, a man, what, are, what do you consider yourself, a trader or an analyst? Uh, what, what's more important? What do you consider yourself first, a trader or analyst? The, the man always says trader. The woman always says analyst. Most women say analyst first. It's fascinating. Men go right for the trader. They want to be the trader. They want to jump in and trade, right? Before you can do that, you have to learn a how to analyze. So I definitely need to point out the difference between analyzing and trading. Before you're going to learn how to trade, you need to be an analyst first. Um, so what we cover today is going to hopefully improve uh, what you do as an analyst because I know that you're not going to get to where you want to be um, without having a sound methodology and that's not something that we can throw at you and you can learn overnight. So 
So I'm, I apologize if I'm not uh, going at a quicker pace for you, but I know the, the importance of education and repetition. So how can we help to improve your trade selection? That's going to be the, the big one. Know when direction is aligned with price pattern. And this is something, it's pretty simple, and you guys are probably better at it than you know. Uh, I learned uh, a lot over the four years it took to get put together our courses at Ivy University. And most important, the most important thing I learned was uh, trade when direction is aligned with price pattern. Because this determines when to enter a trade, when to exit a trade. Essentially, uh, it's the trigger that we use at Ivy University, and that is when direction is aligned with price pattern. Now, before we can go any further, we definitely need to break down and define that both price pattern and direction. Uh, price pattern is pretty simple to identify, but you'd be surprised how if you put up a chart, I'll put up a chart, and a beginning student looks at it, and I say, what's the pattern? And they start asking me all kinds of questions, and they start going this way and that way. They want to show me things that they know, but they're not just saying, oh, that's a bearish pattern, next chart. That's a bullish pattern, next chart. So you need to be able to look at a chart in a second and say, hey, that's bullish and bearish, because that's pretty important news for you, because that's as you start to scroll down and get closer to the time you're going to trade, uh, you need to know uh, that pattern. Uh, Boyke said, do you mean trend when you say pattern recognition? Uh, the the, the short-term trend is direction. The long-term trend is pattern. How about that? Boyke, I think you asked me something similar last week. Yeah, look at, look at, there's a difference. It's a great point. There's a difference between pattern and trend. Short-term trend is direction. Pattern is long-term trend. So no one direction is aligned with price pattern. Of course, we have to identify both those, uh, define them before we can go on, right? Price pattern, pretty simple price pattern, is the pattern created by a market's highs and lows over time. It's just a matter of marking the isolated high points and low points on the chart, and then identifying uh, that market is exhibiting either a bullish or bearish or a neutral pattern over a, a specified length of time. Um, this is, uh, we have a little over one year on the chart. So we could see our, our primary pattern, which we call one year. Uh, we say the primary pattern can't hide on a daily chart. If you have a year's worth of data, it should pop out at you, right? So here, very simple. This is the euro, by the way. We just mark the isolated highs and isolated lows. So clearly we have a, ba a bearish pattern on the chart. And you can see I haven't updated the chart in a little bit. Uh, price is uh, all the way down here. Uh, so no surprise when we first uh, got together, what, two weeks ago, this was a fresh chart, or uh, I'm sorry, a little bit longer than that. Uh, we knew then the, the, the pattern was bearish, right? So the pattern was bearish, prices are lower today, uh, pretty good stuff, right? Uh, Aclave, okay, sir, now show us how you analyze any pair for the day week and how you make trades. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get to that, uh, sir. It's here's the important thing to know about education. You're not going to to come to preschool and then end up at the end of the day, uh, you know, in eighth grade, uh, you know, knocking out the courses, getting uh, getting high grades, right? It's, it's uh, you got to move along. So price pattern. This is simple exercise. By the way, this is exactly what I'm getting to too, uh, El Um if in order to make money in the euro, and, and you could see this was, this chart was taken at the end at the beginning of April, well, you'd have to tell me how come you didn't make money in the euro if you knew that the pattern was down. Clearly, the pattern was bearish uh, at the beginning of April, so uh, you'd have you'd have to explain to us what you're doing wrong if you didn't make money, because uh, clearly the pattern was bearish. But there, there you can see it, no doubt about it, uh, pretty simple stuff. You had a bear pattern to begin with. Uh, here's another pattern. Here's uh, the stock market. Um, it's a bullish pattern, higher lows, higher highs. Again, this is the U.S. stock market over the last couple of years. Um, this is so important to us because price pattern or more specifically growth patterns are absolutely scalable, meaning the smaller price moves that we see here on the left side of the chart are most often scaled replications of the larger price moves here that we see on the overall chart. I'll show that to you again. See the little, the, whoop, here are the scaled moves on the left side of the chart, those three impulse moves up. Essentially, that's giving you the overall pattern, then you see three impulse moves up on the higher time frame. So knowing when direction has shifted in line with the dominant pattern as it did here and here is very critical. 
another even more simplified way to look at this, and I hope you guys appreciate the simplicity of this and the slow pace of it, it's very, very simple. You're looking to buy dips in an uptrend, right? That's how you make money. If price is going up, you're going to look to buy dips in an uptrend. Uh, if price is going down, you're looking to sell rallies in a downtrend. It's shocking how people don't know that basic uh, that basic thing in trading. Um, scale, more word, I know more on scalability. It's important to understand scalability because it's easy to overlook basic patterns, especially if you're focusing on technical indicators or crowding the chart with other overlays. Or worse, you have an opinion that's uh, wrong. But if you know to recognize those higher time frame patterns, uh, such as we see there, it becomes much easier to understand and then even expect those same patterns on in smaller scale on the lower time frames. There, if you look to the far right of the chart, you can see a little tiny little pattern there. These patterns are essentially just replications of the overall uh, the overall growth pattern. The, the really good news here is not that markets typica, typify fractal geometry, though that they do, and that's great news. But the really good news is that we as individuals are naturally very good at pattern recognition. In fact, one of the things we're still better at than a computer is simple pattern recognition. While each pattern a market creates is wholly unique, it's generally just a slight variance from previous patterns. That slight variance doesn't mean much to you and I, we recognize the pattern easily, but it sure does throw off the computer, uh, which only knows to look for what you've programmed into. Now, this is why actually that Wall Street doesn't make its money from betting on which way a market's going to go, but on taking the other side of all our trades that is making markets, and of course from uh, getting paid a transaction fee, which is essentially a commission. If Wall Street knew what they were doing, they they, they could make their money from uh, gambling or betting which way a market's going to go or speculating which way a market's going to go, um, they wouldn't have problems like J.P. Morgan blowing a, a $2 billion hole through things. So no. uh, banks, uh, brokerage firms, they make money from uh, making a market and from the transaction costs, not from trying to determine which way the market's going to go first. Uh, and back to the, the point here that um, a computer is not going to help you so much with pattern recognition because by the time you get a program to look for it, the pattern's already changed, right? On the other hand, you are all very good at pattern recognition. Oh, boy, kids. So what is your word for patterns as head and shoulders, triangles, double tops, bottom? Uh, it's, it's just a bearish pattern. If, if it's in my cell zone, I don't care what it is, What, regardless of whether it's a, uh, a head and shoulder, a triangle, a double top, a double bottom, if it's in my pattern zone, I don't care what it is, I'm going I'm to take the signal. So you'll get the pattern, the individual pattern itself is not important. It A shorter term I guess uh, a pattern formation, a, a chart formation is not so important as that overall pattern. I really don't care if you have a, a two-week head and shoulder uh, top if uh, you have a, uh, you know, your primary pattern is up. Okay, hopefully uh, everyone can still hear me. Uh, it looks like he lost his sound there. Um, so scalability, very important. Pattern, very important. Yeah, Boyke said he's okay. Okay, good. Spin doctor, thank you, sir. Or ma'am, excuse me. Uh, so scalability, extremely important part of trading. Uh, another great quality of price movement, along with being scalable, is it's repetitive. Boom, boom, boom. You see that? The study to describe this phenomenon is called fractal geometry. Once a growth curve is established, be it positive or, in this case, negative, in the case of this market, it tends to be repetitive, uh, as you can see, and this is a four-hour Aussie dollar chart. Now, uh, I I'm saying here that the, the pattern is bearish. You have a negative growth pattern, right? Uh, the negative growth pattern is simple to see because you have a series of lower, uh, lower highs and lower lows, right? But why is the growth curve negative? Why is it showing a pattern of lower lows and lower highs? Well, uh, on the trading floor, the answer to that question is why is it is who cares? Seriously, who cares? All you need to know is that's what it is. But it's a funny thing how uh, for most of us, it, it does matter. Uh, for most of us, we like to know why something is occurring because it's going to give us more confidence in that learning stage. And you're not going to learn it so well if I say who cares. And that's why a trading floor was a great environment because, I mean, it was uh, you know, it was just kind of uh, survival of the fittest. Uh, 
you better pick things up quickly, right? But in realistically, for us to learn on a screen, to be sitting in our home or our office, learning to trade on a screen, it helps us to know why we have a negative pattern, why we're looking at that. It's just human nature. We want to know how things work. And when we do, we're going to be better at learning them and demonstrating uh, them for ourselves. So uh, the question is why we're seeing a negative, negative growth curve. In this case, in the Australian dollar at the time was that the day-to-day -day flow of news, the day-to-day -day flow of events was negative. The pattern on the chart is absolutely a reflection of the underlying fundamental. So the pattern on this four-hour chart is negative because the flow of the day-to-day -day news is negative. Now, that's a very powerful thing. And, and again, it's another thing where you guys could say, hey, show me how to trade this on a chart. Well, let me ask you, uh, you know, have you made money uh, short the euro or short the Australian dollar in the last couple months? Because we're midway through May, and you're still exhibiting uh, scalability and repetition, you still have a negative growth pattern, the market just continues to repeat itself. Uh, so it starts on these higher time frames, and it really starts with your own philosophy that um, if you understand when you see a negative growth curve that that's a reflection of negative news, then you're going to be a lot more confident than it's really just a matter of uh, waiting for a bull trend line to break and then getting short, right? So if you want to know why it has a negative or a positive growth curve, it's simple to see, too simple to see. Look at the chart. If you want to know why, that means bullish or bearish day-to-day -day news. And again, it, from an analyst standpoint, the most important thing is uh, identify that critical point in time when direction shifts in line with the price pattern. Uh, this occurrence, which we've highlighted here in red circles, is called a change of direction. An even more simple way to look at this is if we're looking uh, another much more simple way to, to view this is that we're looking to sell following rallies in a downtrend. Trying trader, absolutely, of course it's harmonic. Everything is harmonic, right? There's no doubt about it. It just continues to repeat itself. It's much more simple than you think it really is. But, of course, when it comes into you you, you speculating and risking your money, that, that has more to do with what's going on between your two ears than what's going on in the market. And that's where it gets fun. That's where it gets complicated. Um, you know, as, as well, I, I think as, as well as we can teach this stuff, and I think we do a pretty good job, at some point it's still natural selection too. Uh, so you guys, have to, uh, you guys have to bring a clear head to the table for sure. So uh, keep it simple. You know, we could draw lines on there. We can explain uh, in geometric terms why it works that way and in fundamental uh, sociological terms why it works that way. The bottom line is all you need to know is when you see a negative pattern, you're looking to sell rallies in a downtrend. So buy dips in an uptrend, sell rallies in a downtrend. Again, I'm just demonstrating when direction shifts in line with pattern. This is so critical for us. Uh, we have to know that point right there when direction shifts in line with the pattern. Boom, when direction shifts in line with the pattern. The pattern is obviously bearish, you can see from the pattern, and this is a five-year pattern. We call this our grand pattern in the euro, and you can see the grand pattern is bearish too. Look at the pattern of lower highs and lower lows. So that pattern that we're talking about, we call that a change of direction. That's a, a combination of a trend line break plus a directional line shift, and now we've got to define the, the, the both those for you. Well, we'll define the directional line. You guys know where the trend line is, right? We're going to define that directional line, and that directional line is a pretty good trigger for you, and it's a trigger that you're going to use when you see a bearish pattern. You're going to wait for a rally. You're going to draw your trend line, and then when you get that trend line break plus that directional line shift, then that's going to be a signal for you. A directional line defined, I want you to take a minute and write this down. It's the low of the highest closing candle in an uptrend and the high of the lowest closing candle in a downtrend. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I want to get to the charts and show you how that euro has been performing and why um, you, you should have been, uh, you should be learning to take, uh, taking bites out of that thing on the way down. So write that down, the low of the highest closing candle in the uptrend, the high of the lowest closing candle in the downtrend. It's pretty important for us. It's a pretty good trigger, you'll find. And here's just, it's on the chart, change of direction. Uh, price reversal equals a trend line shift plus a directional line shift. Again, the directional line is just the low of the highest closing candle in the uptrend 
and the high lows closing candle and the downtrend. There can only be one directional line on the chart. And hey, let's break it down very simple that if price is below the directional line, the direction is down. And if price is above the directional line, uh, the direction is up. So keep it very, very simple. If price is above the directional line, the direction is up. If it's below it, direction is down. Uh, in order to reverse, though, you need both a trend line shift and a directional line shift. And that's why I highlighted this guy up here, because not only price closed below the, the low of the highest closing candle right there, it also closed below the trend line. Uh, same story here. I highlighted this one. Uh, that's the directional line I highlighted. I highlighted this directional line here also because look what happened. It not only it closed above the directional line, it also closed above the trend line. So that's what we call a price reversal. A price reversal in my world, another another uh, name for a price reversal is a buy or sell signal. Uh, highest closing candle. Uh, the highest can the highest closing candle. That's right, uh, Jack. And Michael says, does price have to close above the directional line or just pierce it? Jay? No, it would have to close above it to shift it. It can trade through it and needs to close above it. Um, just imagine uh, a series of green candles on the way up. Take the highest closing candle. You're going to draw a line under it. It's not the highest candle. It's the highest closing candle. You're going to draw a line under that. Once price closes below that line, you had a change in direction. However, if it's still above the trend line, you haven't had a reversal. So a change of direction is when price closes above or below that line, a full-blown reversal, a full signal, is when it closes below that line and the trend line. So I'm just demonstrating it for you now. Um, and each, you're going to have a directional line for every time frame, too. This is a weekly chart, so our directional lines are white here. So we went with the white directional line. So really, the, the easiest way to show you how that directional line works, and basically what I'm showing you is look for this. You want to look for a trend line break plus a directional line shift in line with that overall pattern. So that's what we're looking at, the price reversal, trend line shift plus a directional line shift. Easiest way to do it, take you to the charts. Now, um, there's one more note here. And there's one, uh, okay, we got it. Yeah, there's, one, uh, there's only one directional line per time frame. The directional line are color-coded, white for weekly, yellow for daily, teal for 240. Uh, also, if you want to know more, before we go to the charts, I apologize, if you want to know more about the directional lines, Chapter 3 in the book, Mastering Trade Selection and Management. Now, at one point, too, before we go to the charts, I'm not showing you how to trade, okay? We're showing you a tactic that we use to analyze markets, to put everything in context, to make trading decisions, then we trade. A big reason I don't like giving trading tactics away is I don't know uh, how you're going to use that and how you're going to apply it. It, it. From my perspective, if I show you something, uh, uh, some aspect of trading in, in a webinar like this, for all I know, I could be giving you enough rope to hang yourself with, right? You have to take the disclaimer seriously. So please, before you ever risk hard-earned money in the marketplace, Please understand you need education and you need experience and you need time to put that all together. So I think the tactic I'm going to show you, though, that trend line break directional line shift is something that should keep you out of trouble. And uh, uh, the, really the most important thing I can impart to you today is uh, really please get educated, get the experience before you're going to risk your hard-earned money in the marketplace. So, hey, let's go to the chart. Um, this is always good advice. Uh, here, let me... Reset this guy. Okay. Uh, can everyone see the, the Euro four-hour chart we're looking at now? Okay, great. Thank you, Boyke. Okay, so we're looking at a four-hour chart. Um, it, it's very simple. Uh, remember when I said when, you know, why is the pattern bullish or bearish? And I joked around who cares? Well, it's really not who cares. The pattern is bullish because you have bullish day-to-day -day news uh, in the market. Here the pattern was bullish. You know what's great about a four-hour chart? It's going to give you that day-to-day. -day. Look at two weeks on a four-hour chart, you're going to get the day-to-day -day news flow. So that day-to-day -day pattern, what you see on the chart is, is a reflection of the day-to-day -day news flow. So when I see here, when I come in, I can come in here 
and I could see that I've got a bearish pattern. I've got lower lows and lower highs. So at that point, I have a pretty good idea overall that I'm in a I'm in a bearish environment, right? And I also have happen to have the uh, the benefit of blowing out to a daily chart, and I could see that uh, I have my primary pattern is down. I have my secondary pattern down. So I have all that. Uh, I have multiple patterns stacked down. And even at this point, before before we even gapped lower two Sundays ago, come on, I'm in a I'm in a bearish. I could see the news flow is bearish. So pretty pretty bearish environment. So um, let's drop all the way down to a 15 minute chart and go back to um, let's go back. This is not this Sunday. This is last Sunday. Remember, we had that big gap opening last Sunday. Big gap opening last Sunday, right? So what did I say before, and what did I have uh, pinned on the four-hour chart? Buy dips and an uptrend, sell rallies and a downtrend, right? So when we come here to that gap two Sundays ago, um, and we see the pattern overall, what is that pattern? It's a bearish pattern, right? It's lower, uh, low, excuse me, lower highs, lower lows. So the pattern is bearish here. So if we have a bearish pattern, what are we looking to do? We're looking to sell rallies in that downtrend. So we have to wait for the rally. Now, I saw uh, someone had a question about retracement. Uh, what is that? What is it? Uh, uh, living daylight. How do you differentiate between retracement, pullback, and trend shift? Um, yeah, living daylight. Now, a, a retracement is different than uh, a, a trend line break. When you have, once you get a trend line break, for instance, here, once you get that trend line break, it becomes more likely you're going to get a retracement. Now, remember last week I, I, I cheated. I broke out a 50% retracement line because I know how powerful they are, and I'm, I'm not here to teach you price direction right now. I'm trying to teach you when when uh, direction is aligned with pattern. So I'm, I'm trying to teach you when you get a reversal in line with the overall pattern, right? But 50% is pretty powerful. So when this trend line breaks, that means it's more likely you're going to get a retracement. So I'll put that 50% retracement on there on the chart. And that I know that will give me a pretty good heads up. That's going to gauge the strength of this. Now, hey, 66 or 6, 618, 625, those are all good ones too. You can have that on there also. But in this case, you know, the, the pattern is decidedly negative. Price does rally. So you get that rally up to the 50. So when – this trend line breaks, and I, at that point right there, I've got a double, I got a double top below the, the 50 percent line. That's a pretty good deal there. So I'll take that trade right there. This is when this to me, I'm, I'm selling in a downtrend after a rally. I have both the trend line break and uh, my direction is changing too. Looks like at the time this was the highest closing candle. Once you close below that low, that highest closing candle here things started to shift for you. Put that stop behind that 50% line, though. If you don't, you're going to get stopped out there. If you put the stop just above that high and you get hit there, you got to go right back in. you got to get short. So when, this look, when, the, when that trend line breaks and you get that change of direction, and here's, here's going to be a, cha a major change of direction there. Uh, remember, you want to mark that low of the highest closing candle right there? Once you close below there, once you get that change of direction right there, right there, that's a change of direction. You have to be aware of that. And most important, this is where it gets fun, the, the long-term pattern is bearish. Why is the long-term pattern, why, I'm sorry, why is the long-term pattern bearish? Not who cares, but the long-term pattern is bearish is because the day-to-day -day news flow is negative in the market. And we can see that by the pattern. Absolutely, the chart pattern reflects what's going on fundamentally really can't work any other way. So this would definitely be an area of interest on the chart for us. So anytime you get that rally, that's what you're looking to, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're waiting on the rally, and then when you get that rally, you're just waiting to, uh, you know, it's just a matter of waiting for uh, the rally to come and then draw a trend line on it. Whoops. Now, here we have a uh, a little rally right here. So you're going to draw your trend line there, and you're going to look for that change of direction. Whoops, I didn't need to go ahead like that. 
when you get the chance, here's the highest closing candle right here. So once you close below that right there, that's definitely, you got to get in there. And I, maybe you had another 50% retracement there. Not sure. It looks like it may have been. Yeah, look at that. No kidding. And that's pattern. You saw the pattern, this larger pat. This is a 50% retracement here. The pattern is just repeating itself. So that's scalability. That's fractal geometry. So when you have that COD right there, that change of direction, that trend line break, you're on that. Now, you could be on a lower time frame, too, to get it also. So that, you know, that's all you're doing. You're just waiting for um, rallies. There's another one to draw a trend line on. And really, you have to ask yourself, because you knew, I showed you that daily chart in the beginning of the, in the back in the PowerPoint. So you had a, sorry about that. I'm trying to get that, stick that line on there without going ahead. Now, you may be asking why I have the MACD on here, too. Uh, the MACD, to, we use momentum to filter, too. Now, here's a change of direction and a trend line shift right there. That'd be a sell signal, but look at the momentum. The momentum's up. You don't want to get short. You'd rather wait for at least that MACD, to, uh, that MACD histogram to downtick. Ideally, you'd have the MACD bearish out, right? But you see the MACD somewhat bullish, so that's why you're not interested in as interested in that sell signal. So all you're waiting, you're waiting on the, the trend line shift. I know what I'm doing wrong here. I need to go with the, the ray there. Here we go. So here's the change of direction. We're waiting on the trend line break. There's the trend line break right there. That would definitely be your sell signal. Um, even if you had a second trend line drawn here, if you continue to update your trend line. Bam, right there. So that'd be your sell signal. Absolutely. Philip J., thank you. He said, simple. Is there less here to trading than meets the eye? Yes, absolutely. Hey, let's go to some live charts. Someone said the monthlies and stuff. Let's go to what's happening in the markets now so we can determine what might happen tomorrow. Uh, but thank you, Philip J. That was a great comment. Uh, that's what Rich Dennis said. Richard Dennis, who is the founder and the backer of the Turtles, more important, he backed the Turtles. He provided the money. He taught them how to trade. Um, when, when, a, when a news uh, a newsman, a newspaper man, uh, Dennis started this whole movement. He's a fascinating guy because he's a philosopher, too, and he'd get the young traders together after work, and they, they'd talk about these things. He's a fascinating guy. They'd invite the press in. And one time someone in the press looked at him. He said, Dennis, you've got the biggest wallet in the room. And it was a, it was a big room. It had a lot of big wallets in that room because you were talking about the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade. And he said, Dennis, uh, you know, what is it? Why is it that you have the, best wa the biggest wallet in the room? He said, there is less here than meets the eye. So, so that's that. Hey, but you get, you, get the, you get what I'm trying to say about selling rallies and downtrends, right? I mean, we could just go on and on. It's just, it's just repetition. That's all it is. So anytime you get, uh, anytime you get a trend line break and a change of direction, and it, a lot of times it happens to come on those 50% levels too, uh, all the better, right? Well, it didn't quite make it there. Oh, here would be the 50. Well, it got a little above it, but it doesn't even matter. The, the pattern, it's just going to repeat itself, uh, that pattern, and it's just a matter of going along with the flow. Less is more. That's right, Bokey. So it, 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 it's a fascinating study in trading. It, it's not that big of a deal. Let's let's go with. Uh, I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Um, let me go first with the uh, on Australian dollar chart here, and you, you, you can see I had a pretty good correction in the Australian dollar here, right? Uh, I'm going to go to a monthly chart, and we'll show you how the monthly directional line on here. All right, I'm gonna remember the, the concept that the, uh, the the low of the highest closing candle in the uptrend. Look what happened. Um, last year, this is the highest closing candle, right? 
you close blow it. So you shift it to the directional line. Here, we have this automated too. I'll, I'll put it on here so it's automated so you can see it. Directional line. And I'm going to, I'm going to only show it so you can see the monthly. I'm going to turn off the daily and the weekly. And these, by the way, you can draw these by hand. You don't need them automated. You should be able to draw them by hand. You want to learn how to do them by hand. Uh-oh, I need to turn these off, not on, right? Okay, you see the brown line maroon for monthly? I'm going to show you how this works. And this is actually pretty cool. Whoops. Okay, we're going to go back. We're going to go back in time uh, to 2011. Okay, every time I make a new high close, that directional line... The directional line, it's either going to mark the low of the highest closing candle or it's going to start marking if you get a reversal. If you close below that line on a monthly basis, then it's going to shift and it's going to mark the high of the new low closing candle. Keep it simple. If price is above the monthly line, the monthly trend is up. If price is below the monthly trend, I'm sorry, direction. If it's above the line, direction is up. Below the line, direction is down. Clearly, you have a bullish pattern, but that's your direction. What happened right there? It shifted. The line shifted back in uh, late 2011. The direction on the monthly Aussie was down then. Look at how close. It couldn't get above it. Uh, January, February, March, April. Now here we are in May. Guess what? Monthly direction is still down in the Aussie. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not bearish yet here because, uh, well, here would be the trend line. All it takes are two points to draw a trend line. So I think you're at a significant level in the Aussie. The pattern is still bullish, but the direction is down. So when the pattern's uh, bullish, the direction is bearish, nothing to do. We're, we look for a change of direction in line with the pattern. So that's very cool. The Australian dollar gave us a heads up last year that uh, direction had shifted. Now, if you're a money manager, that's pretty useful information, right? Because you're getting a heads up ahead of time that you could see uh, you know, a correction. Hasn't happened yet, though. Um, let's show let's show you where we're at on the Australian dollar today, and there's that trend line again. I, I think you're at a pretty uh, you're at a uh, you're at a pretty interesting area here. I'm not I'm not bearish on this market by any means because I think as long as you're above uh, 99 even, uh, you're good. So as long as you're above the trend line, you're good. Also, I happen to know that the the primary pattern and the secondary pattern. This would be my secondary pattern from here up. That's still bullish. You're still you still have a pattern of uh, higher lows, don't you? So it looks a little deceptive. A lot of momentum down here, but uh, for me that pattern's still up. So this, to me, you're in a pretty interesting area on the chart right here. I rarely trade breakouts, uh, living daylight. I rarely trade the breakouts. I'm always looking to buy a dip or sell a rally, and you get them. That's that's the nice thing about them. You get them. Uh, here you, we could see the potential bottoming out process in the Aussie here against that trend line. Um, today, look at this, despite the, the bad Greek news that hit the market, despite the uh, the um, <clears throat> the euro getting blasted, look at the, the Aussie, what is this? This is a higher low today. So you're in a position to possibly have a higher low now. And um, if you look at the la your last impulse move down, oh, let's just take today's range. You take, or I'm sorry, you take yesterday's range, and you can look, and you're currently, oh, you're not above it. I thought you were you were above the 50%. So you got above it, but even when this broke back down, you still only made, you still have a lower high here. So I'm not so bearish on the Aussie. I think you've got good support. Uh, well, I, I've got a pretty good idea. You have good support between 99 and par. Now, the euro, that's a completely different animal for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Michael. Great question. You take time of day into consideration. I'm going to give you something for nothing. You know, it's a great time of the day to look to trade. Uh, and I knew this is a uh, when I traded stock indices too. I'll show it to you. Same, I'll show you the trade in the euro. Uh, Two o'clock East Coast time. One o'clock my time. That's when I want to be in my chair and I want to see what's happening. What happened yesterday? I need to find a, a clock here. I apologize.
There it is. Uh, yeah, Michael, great question. Yes, time of day, very critical. Uh, here's 1 o'clock, my time, 2 o'clock East Coast. Look at this trade yesterday. I think that was a 50%. Look at the, the you had to change direction there, shift right there. That shift happened at 1 o'clock. Now, a lot of currency traders don't know that because generally it's slow then. But it occurred right below a 50% there. But that was the, that was a good shift, one, the 115 trade. So you want to look for that now. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I wish uh, I wish I could get up. I wish I had the energy to get up and trade London because London's still the best time of day to trade. But you have pretty good trade in the U.S. too. So yeah, definitely time of day is important. You had the same trade. That was the Euro, same trade yesterday uh, in the uh, and you've had that pattern too. Last week you had some great trades at that in the U.S. afternoon session. And here's the same trade yesterday in the Aussie. These correlations are still very important. And by the way, you could have a bear market in the euro and a bull market in Aussie. And that's what you have now, basically. You're in a bear market in the euro and you're in a bull market in the Aussie. It's just that you're going to get, you know, uh, impulse. When you get an impulse move down in the euro, you get a trend move down in the euro, you get a counter trend move in the Aussie. For example, you know, this could have been a counter trend move, right? Because you, you didn't make a lower low today in the Aussie. And you're on that big trend line. And you have a good pattern line here at 99 even, too. I don't have on that chart. But you got some good uh, good stuff here in the Aussie. So uh, potentially bottoming out. I don't know how many of you guys follow the U.S. stock market, but that's an alpha market extremely important to us. And uh, speaking of the directional line, here's the monthly chart. Look at that's the low. What's going on here? This is the stock market, bullish pattern to it. That's the low of the highest closing candle on the monthly. So you're above, you're still above that monthly directional line. I go all the way down to a day trade chart, a 15 minute chart. Here you just did make a lower low today to yesterday, but you could be in a bottoming formation here. So be aware of this and also be aware that that powerful uh, correlation between the stock markets, the currencies, any asset class markets, commodities, all of them, they've got that, uh, that really tight correlation. So that's good to know. Uh, but so the euro, you want to continue to sell rallies in the euro. Uh, Aussie back off though. If you're if you're bearish on the Aussie still, that's okay. Uh, just be careful when you put your money where your mouth is in that Aussie though, because it looks to be bottoming out. Euro keep on selling rallies. Uh, it's a bear market. And if you want to know uh, a lot more about uh, what we're doing, uh, as I said, uh, this book mastering the currency market. This would be the equivalent of. Uh, uh, oh, say for juniors or uh, this would be more of an advanced book. Whole chapter on uh, directional lines in the book. And also, uh, oh, do uh, Michael, Dollar Cad, I'm bullish on that guy. But it's got to clear uh, par 50, though. Dollar Cad's got to get above par 50. If not, um, you know, you could, you're, you're, par if you don't get above par 50 in Dollar Cad, you're probably going to retrace that two week up move. If you look at a four-hour chart of dollar CAD right now, uh, guys, ladies, you will see that the day-to-day -day news is bullish for that market right now. You'll, you'll see the four-hour. Uh, if you take two weeks on a four-hour chart, that's going to basically be your, your, your fundamental flow. And you can see it's bullish right now. Uh, but that could soften up, though. If you get a recovery rally in stocks and the Aussie, you'll probably see a correction in dollar CAD. Hey, uh, if you want to know more about it, the book also, even better, um, go to uh, our, our website, ibuniversity.com, and you see the big box in the upper left-hand corner. Click there, and you can get our core concepts one and two for free. And it's a great website. It's very secure, but once you get in it, uh, then it's great, and it works like a charm. I understand some of you guys tried to apply, get that free thing last week, and uh, there was a little glitch in there. I think we got that squared away, but we're definitely going to get that simplified overall. What uh, blue line, what? What time pattern for pattern one trading 15 minute? Um, I, I focus on that. Four, I focus on the pattern on the four hour. Look at the the, the two week pattern on a four hour chart. It's going to tell you a lot. It really is. So I, I really focus on that two week pattern on the four hour chart. Then I trade. I wait for trend line breaks, change of direction on the 15 in line with that pattern on the four hour. It's, it, it is that simple. It, you know, if when you look at that, we showed you that euro chart from back in March, April, it had a bearish pattern to it. Guess what? It's only gotten more bearish. 
Oh, Volky, a sideways pair? Very carefully. I, I generally will focus on a trending pair. Oh, no, a sideways is good. You could still trade within the pattern. There are still moves within the sideways pattern. But I, I, that's a balanced market. That's a whole different animal. I prefer unbalanced markets. You could trade it, though. You, you, you trade, you scalp, you, you'll, you, we'll provide scalp lines. We give the client scalp lines based on the scales. We really didn't even touch on the scales because that's, uh, really, that's advanced stuff. Again, you know, we, I have to walk that line. I, I don't, I, whatever I give you, I have to make sure that it's not enough rope to put around your neck and, and end up, uh, you know, hanging yourself, basically. Uh, trading is a risky endeavor, and hopefully I can teach you something. If I'm giving you something away, i got to make sure it's something that doesn't hurt you, that's for sure. Well, Living Daylight, you got good questions. Uh, I tell you what, you go to our, our go to ibuniversity.com, you can sign up for the live market exercise. You hit that button, same button, you can sign up for the live market exercise. You can also sign up for next week's uh, webinar here. And the live market exercise is where I can answer your questions more one-on-one. -on -one. Keep the rope short. I have to keep that rope short, Bokey. Uh But if you go to uh, the website and sign up for the free courses, you're going to have a big leg up. And then come and see us in our live market exercise. Hey, thank you so much. I hope I asked, uh, I answered everyone's questions. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll do it again uh, next week. And I'll try to continue to update, to, to shorten the PowerPoint so we can get to the markets uh, quicker also. Hey, thank you so much, everybody.